my old friends. It's so good to see you guys. And of course, our little Rizzo is back. Of course she is. High fives. High fives for being back. Oh, there we go. One more. Oh, good girl. So good to see you guys. Thank you for having me back in your homes on this Sunday evening. So for those of you who don't know me or just have forgotten, it's been a while, right? I am Tracy and I am Strong Style Fit. So um, pre two months or so ago, um, I came to you live every Tuesday and Saturday with fitness videos for gosh, almost two years of 140 or so videos I did for you guys. And um, just took a little hiatus, um, just kind of back to the drawing board. How do I want to continue my virtual fitness journey with you guys. So um, today, this is, I'm still on the hiatus, so we're still on the drawing board, we're still coming up with ideas, but really what I'm doing tonight is a great example of sort of the direction that we're headed. Um, not surprise live videos in the middle of the night, but while hard work and hard workouts are, are definitely right in my wheelhouse and how I like to work out, for those of you who know me outside of this virtual world, really a lot of what I do, my specialization is functional training, corrective exercise, mobility work, things like that. I'm actually a lot more specialized in my, my real life <laughs> than my virtual workouts have been. So, um, you know, getting back to some of the things that I'm really known for, these really customized workouts are kind of the direction that I'm headed. So this video is a great example of some of the things that I'm really thinking about focusing on. So this is my seated stretch class. I taught this live for a, quite a while and it's something that's really near and dear to me. I am a very kind of natural, naturally flexible person, but chair stretch is great even for someone like me who's pretty bendy and flexy, even though not so much today. So um, this is just a great example of where we're going. So just wanted to kind of let you know and get back in touch with you guys and let you know what I'm thinking, the direction I'm headed, and just to get out in front of you guys and say hello again. And speaking of hello, I also want to say hello to any new to me viewers that might be coming to me um, today via my connection with the Renegades of Puck, which is an amazing hockey podcast, vlog, I don't know what you call it, social media giant <laughs> that is covering the Predators and all things hockey and uh, works right over here across the garage from me in an amazing set that they built over here. So I know some of you might be joining me due to my connection with them. And so welcome. If you are on your first day of your fitness journey, this is a great place to start. And I'll cover this a little more later, but really, if you're looking to get fit, one of the first things you have to do, not just before your workout is stretch, but one of the first things you have to do to get ready to start getting into fitness is to get yourself mobile. So many of us who have been immobile and not been working out, not being um, into exercise, we get so stiff, we get so tight, we don't move right at all that's no knock on you it's just reality and so when you are that tight that clenched up and then you go to do something basic I'm not gonna say simple but a basic exercise like a squat if your hips are tight if your glutes are tight everything's gonna feel just wrong and it's just not gonna move right and it can be frustrating and it can lead you to stop wanting to work out completely because you're like this sucks this hurts I can't move this doesn't feel right you expect to be sore, but you don't expect all of those other things. And so this is a great way to start your fitness journey, is start stretching, start getting mobile, and then jump into those harder workouts. So that's my intro. Who is this video great for? Aside from the renegades of Puck I was just talking about, really anybody that's non-mobile, of course. This is kind of a no-brainer. If you're not able to get in the floor and do stretches, this is a great place to be in a chair, that's all you need, and you can get a wonderful stretch. Also, for those of us that are not flexible, so I was talking about how I'm bendy and flexy, again, not so much today, but if you're a not flexible person, if stretching is difficult for you, and then you get in the floor and start just jumping into these extreme stretches, 
and, and honestly not even extreme stretches, just kind of your normal in the floor type stretches. If you are not a flexible person, if you're a very tight person, and then you start trying to do these stretches in the floor, you will be tense, right? Because it's difficult. So you're like, oh my gosh, trying to get your leg up here and it hurts so bad. And so your whole body is like, oh gosh, all tensed up. You're not really stretching because you're like in panic mode, right? You're locked up, you're tensed up, you're, oh, this hurts, oh, this hurts, oh, this hurts. You're not really stretching, you know? You're, you need to relax to be able to really stretch. And if you set yourself up in a way that you are not going to be able to relax, then you're not gonna be able to get a good stretch. So being in a chair where you can be comfortable and you can take some of that tension out and really relax and ease into the movement, that's where the money is. So that's another great reason to do a chair class. So last couple days when we'll get going, um, we are going to talk about the when. When should I do this class? And really, phew, pretty much any time works. So in the morning, if you were like me, bedtime is unfortunately my most uncomfortable times. Laying down in my bed leads to pain. It's not a happy statement, but it's a true statement. So when I get up in the morning, I am stiff, I am immobile, and I do not feel good. So morning is a great time because again, you're in the chair, it's eased, it's not as intense. So it's a great time to do in a chair class is in the morning. Midday, if you sit at your job, this is a great time on your lunch break, pop in and do this video. I'm honestly not how sure how long it's gonna be, I hope 30 minutes, but if you don't have 30 minutes on your lunch break, you can just do part of the stretches or do them for a little bit shorter time, whatever works. But midday, especially if you have a seated job, this is a great opportunity. You'll still be in your seat, but you can stretch and relieve some of those pain points from being seated all day. And also before bed is another good time. If you have a seated job and then your main activity in the evening is to watch TV, which I'm not judging you, or be on a device or anything like that, it's just the true facts of life. If that's your main evening activity and your daytime activity is sitting at a desk, you probably need to do a little bit of mobility work. So seated class again we're still seated so we're still seated but we are going to get some great stretches before bed so when we go lay down we're a little more relaxed our body's kind of been eased out of the seated position and we'll be a little more ready for bed so really any time is a great time to give this class a shot okay enough talk i'm going to hit the start on my timer just because i want to make sure that this doesn't take forever and ever so we are going to have our seat and now I want you to kind of focus. We're going to start easing into the class. Enough about me, let's ease into the class. So before I get started, I'm just going to pop around the camera, see if any of you had any questions, and then we're going to get into it. Once we're into the class, I'm going to stay over here in front of the camera, unlike a lot of my other classes where I keep checking in, okay? So I'm going to check real quick and then we'll get started. All right, friends, so let's go ahead and have our seat. For the first part of this class, I'm not gonna focus on how you sit, so I want you to just sit comfortably. Now, for your chair, for your seated class, I do want you to pick something that is sturdy. So something like a camping chair, not that I think that's what you have around your house, but you know, something like a camping chair, um, a recliner, that's not good. We really want something like a kitchen chair, or even an office chair could work. Um, preferably something without arms. If it has arms, you can make it work, especially if they're adjustable. But a kitchen chair is really kind of your perfect place to be. So that's what we want for our seat. Something firm or cushioned if possible, something comfortable, but we don't want like something we sink into or some, really that's the biggest thing, something we don't sink into. So we're gonna do a little bit of breath work just to drop into the class, drop the world out, and relax a little bit before we get started, okay? So just sit however is comfortable for you for the beginning. And we're going to take just some kind of guided breaths. Now I'm not going to push you into meditation, even though I swear by it, but I'm not going to push you into that today. I just want you to kind of sit. We're going to do some guided breathing for just a moment, and then we'll get started, okay? 
So let's sit however you feel comfortable. Close your eyes if that's okay for you. If it's not okay for you, just kind of take your gaze like you're trying to look down the end of your nose towards the floor. And we're just going to sit. And I'd like to encourage you to follow me, breathing in for four and out for four. I'll count for the first two or three, and then we'll do another two or three on our own. Okay? So we're going to just close our eyes, again, if that's comfortable, or bring our gaze down our nose. And we're going to breathe in for four, three, two, one. Hold without tension for one, two. Breathe out for four, three, two, one. Hold without tension, two, and one. And breathe in for four, three, two, and one. Hold no tension, two, and one. And breathe out for four, three, two, one. Next two on your own. So I hope that gave you a moment just to kind of sink in to your space, into your chair, and into where we're going next. I will encourage you to move with your breath, especially in some of our movements. But if that's not comfortable for you, if that's too much, if all of this is very new, and you're like, Tracy, don't also throw in moving and breathing at the same time, that's fine. You don't have to stick with that. But I will give you those suggestions. It's just a great way to really keep yourself relaxed while you're stretching. So as far as our posture, now that we're into our stretch, we want to sit on the edge of our chair. We want to sit where our glutes are still firmly on our seat, but our legs are sort of off the seat. We want our feet flat on the floor, so I tend to kind of roll to the outsides of my feet. We want our feet flat on the floor in a 90 degree bend. So from here to here to here, 90, 90s, all the way down. When we sit, I tend to let my belly roll forward and my hips kind of pooch out behind me, my tail tuck, you know, kind of flares out behind me. I want you to really think about rolling your tail down where your tailbone is pointed towards the seat. So I kind of tend to let my belly roll forward, my tail pooch out. So really roll that tail down so you have a nice long, long spine. So we're here. We want our shoulders nice and back and open. We work on devices, right? We work on computers, so we tend to do this. Let that device go. Tail long, chest up, shoulders back. The last thing, I like to pretend that I have a string at the top of my head and it's pulling me up to the ceiling. Nice, tall spine. So those are kind of your cues for the class. Now, will you remember to sit like that the entire time? Nope, you won't, I won't either, but we'll keep coming back to it. Keep thinking about it, and just when you notice that your belly's roll forward, go, oh, get it set back right, okay? So we're here. The last piece we're gonna talk about is our neck posture. So we're gonna sit to the side again. Again, devices, right? We're here. And so because we're here all the time, when we sit, we naturally let our chin, most of us kind of sit forward. But really, our chin is supposed to be back over our chest, not drooping out. So, we want to sit tall, get all of our posture right, and then literally take your chin, put two fingers, and like you're trying to make a double chin, push your head back. I like to think back and up a little bit. So push it back. So now, this actually is a lot more natural. Chin should be over chest, not drooping out. So, here we go. Perfect. So I really want you to think about that neck posture for these next two stretches, because we're gonna get into some side stretches and some neck rolls. And it's really important, push our chin back to where it belongs. Back, and then we're going to take our left hand 
out like we're trying to reach down to the floor. Now we're not bending into it. We're sitting tall, push down, and you're trying to push the floor away from you. Get that neck posture right, and then you're gonna drop your right ear to your right shoulder. Ooh. Now if that's too intense, don't push so hard away from the floor. If it's not intense enough, really, really push down to that floor. Push, push, push. Now you can also play with this a little bit. You can take your chin and you can roll it down towards your right shoulder. See how that feels. We're all tied in different places, so kind of play with it. You can bring it up. Still pushing that floor away with the left hand. Find where it feels good. For me, it's kind of here. This feels good. This also feels pretty good. So just play with that. And we'll hold it for a few more seconds. And wherever you are, turn back to where your right ear is towards your shoulder. And then bring your head up. Good. So we're going to do the other side now. Reset that neck, because most likely it's falling forward again. Reset that neck. Right hand now reaches down towards the floor. Ear to shoulder. Ooh. Now you will almost always feel a little different sensation from left to right. Very, very normal. And again, once you're established, once you've got where you're pushing that floor away from you, your ears to your shoulder, now again, you can play with that chin. Turn it down towards your shoulder. Or maybe up towards the ceiling. See what feels good. Funny enough, while it was the tightest in the beginning, it's released a lot quicker than the other side did. So we'll hold for just a few more seconds here. Awesome. All right, wherever you're at, make sure your ear's back to your shoulder now. And then bring that head up. Good. All right. So from here, we're going to do some neck rolls. Now, don't start doing it because most of us neck roll, we just kind of dump our head around in circles. No good. So let's get our chin, do that posture check one more time. And now I want you to think about your head as rotating around an axis, that your neck is the axis, your head is doing the rotating. So not your whole neck, your head. So get that posture reset. And then, without dumping in, you're just going to tilt your head forward, roll it to your right shoulder, roll it back to the left and to the front. So now you have the feel for that. Let's reset, chin back, and now I want you to start small. Imagine you've got a little pencil coming out of the middle of your head, and you're trying to draw small circles. They get increasingly bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? So set our posture, start with those little circles. Again, head rotating around that axis, making the circles bigger and bigger as we go. You might notice this feels really different from when you've done neck rolls before. Now let's start making them smaller and smaller. Beautiful. All right, reset. And now let's go the other direction. Again, small, small, small. I can't remember which way I was going. Ah! Probably this. Good. And now 
top, you've reached your biggest point, start making them smaller. Perfect. All right, so now let's do some shoulder rolls. Now these are pretty simple. Let's reset our posture. Long tail, chest up. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our shoulders and we're gonna pull them all the way up to our ears and then roll them back down our spine and pull them up. Good, just kind of move at your own pace here. This one is a little broader between right and wrong, not so much uh, room to really go, uh-oh, like with your neck. So just do what feels good here. Roll those shoulders down your spine, up to your ears and down. Now let's reverse it and take them forward, up, and now forward, up, and now forward. Good. Perfect. Let's do one more. Good. Shake it out just a little bit. Now we're going to do some cross body stretches. So definitely something most of us have done before, but I want you to think about it a little different. So we're going to reach our arms out in front of us. And then what do most of us do because of that posture? We reach our arms out and we roll our shoulders forward. I want you to think, though, plug those shoulders back into their home. Your shoulders actually live back here, not out here. So push them back into their home when you reach your arm out. And then let's take our left arm and pull it across our body. Now we're holding at the wrist and we're stretching across. Now. If you don't feel much here, then I give you permission to reach out and let your shoulders roll forward a little bit and then pull it across. So see what feels best for you. Again, we can plug them back, pull it across, or let it roll forward and pull it across. Again, whatever feels the best for you. For me, I don't get too much out of the stretch either way. Just to be honest, it's a great stretch, but again, I'm a little bendy, I'm a little flexy. So for this, I gotta get a little more intense if I wanna get into that back of my shoulder there. All right, and let's reach it forward, other side. Now this one I do feel a little more, so that's good. <laughs> Most of these though, and I promise you, if you're one of the bendy, flexy people like I am, these chair stretches you can still get plenty out of. You just really have to watch your posture and really watch kind of your form. As long as you're doing your form right and you're not making it easier for yourself than you should, you can still get a lot out of these stretches no matter how flexible you are. All right, let's let it go and give it a little stretch. Now we're going to do one of my favorite exercises, and we're going to do two variations of it. I'm going to show you from the front. So for this one, again, we're going to take that tail nice and long, sit tall, and I want you to think about keeping your hips exactly as they are. We're going to reach up like we're making a Y. We're reaching for the sky, make a Y, and we're going to make little fists, and we're going to pull our elbows down towards our ribs, while we lift our heart to the sky. So we're squeezing like we can touch our elbows to each other behind our back and then let go. So this is a little more active movement. We're gonna do it a couple times and then we're gonna hold. So reach up and then pull down. Shy that chest up. You should feel a great stretch across the width of your chest and then let it up. So now let's move with our breath. We're going to breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Two more. Breathe in. Breathe out. Last one. Good, let those arms down. Now I'm gonna take a minute to address. If you've been sitting off the back of your chair, 
tall and supported, your back might be getting a little tired. We don't often sit like this. So let's just take a minute and just release that pressure. Whatever feels good, rock side to side, bend some knees in. We're just gonna relieve that pressure. Our next couple exercises are gonna do that too, but I know how this can feel. So just take yourself a little break. Miss Rizzo's joining us. Hi, sweet girl. All right. So we are now going to do what I call a door frame stretch. Generally done in a door frame. That's why it's called a door frame stretch. But we can actually use our chair to accomplish the same thing. So I hope you'll be able to see this. I'm going to scoot off to the edge of my chair a little bit. So we're going to make like a little half goal post. And we're going to turn and kind of hook it on the back of our chair. You can see this. So we want to make sure that when we're here, our shoulder is rolled back into its socket, that we're not doing this. We roll that shoulder back. We're going to twist, hook it to the back of our chair, and then rotate open. Okay? So what you're trying to do is get your chest open, and then we're opening up against it, getting this nice stretch through here. So, I'm going to reset, roll that shoulder back, and then open against it. Great stretch through the side chest. If you don't feel much, make sure that you're not up here. Again, put that shoulder back where it belongs. Let's do the other side. Again, we're here. Roll that shoulder back to where it belongs. Hook on the back of your chair and then open up against it. Now guys, pro tip, I always have to tell people this in my stretching classes, but again, I'm a somewhat flexible person. So you may not be able to open this far. That is fine. If you are not opening as far as me, or bending over as far as me, or whatevering as far as me, that doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. It just means that you are a little more closed up, and we need to open you up a little more. It is no big deal. So please don't feel like, well, if I can't get my leg over my head, then I'm not doing this right. It's not true. Not true. All right, let's come out of that. Ah, all right. So we've done two really good chest stretches now. So now we're going to take it to a little more intense version, but if you can't do this, that is okay. I'll show you a modification. So we've probably all seen this before. We're going to do chest stretch. So we're going to come up and behind, and I just had to rotate for the wall. We're going to come behind and release our hands, roll our shoulders back, and reach for the ground. Now, if you cannot do this, if you can't get your hands behind your back, or you can't interlace your hands, this is a great opportunity to use the chair for some help. Roll your shoulders back, and then reach back and grab the back of your chair. Perfect. Just hang on to the back of that chair, roll those shoulders down, push that chest forward, and that is perfect. In fact, that feels just as intense as when I had my hands that are locked behind me. So either option works perfectly. We can be here or we can be grabbing the back of our chair. So let's do that and let's hold for just a couple more seconds. Good guys, let that go. Woo, that's a good one. So good. All right, so now, and you'll notice these all flow together. We're starting here, we're working our way down, and each stretch complements the other. So now, we've opened our chest, we're gonna work on some cat cows. If you're familiar with yoga, then you've done cat cow numerous times. We're gonna do a seated version. I'm gonna show you from the front, I'm going to show you from the side. So we're going to put our hands on our knees. And when I say cat-cow, I want you to think cat like a Halloween cat. Like how they arch up their backs and hiss. And then a cow 
I guess they're just talking about the fatness of a cow, how belly droops. <laughs> so think about letting your belly droop. So normally, if you're not familiar with this at all, cat cow, we do on our hands and our knees on the floor, just like this. But instead, we're going to do it seated, and it works just as well. So we're going to do a cow pose. So cow, we're going to pooch our belly out. Now we are going to allow that tailbone to arch back. And we're going to bring our shoulders and chest open. So it's like you're trying to touch your shoulders to your booty. You're trying to arch them together. Push that chest open and we're going to breathe in. And then as we breathe out, reverse it all. Halloween cat back. Arch through that back. Roll forward. Breathe in. And breathe out. And show you from the side now. We're going to breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in. You can even use your knees for some leverage and breathe out. One more, guys. Breathe in. And breathe out. Bring it up to neutral. Good job, guys. One of my favorites. I could cat cow all day long. <laughs> seated on the floor. You can do it seated on the floor. You can do it on hands and knees. Oh, it's just good. It's so good. All right, guys. So now we're going to do a spinal rotation. Now, please keep in mind, if you have any back issues, fusions, things like that, some of these movements are not for you. So please, please, please consider what your medical professional has told you. I am a personal trainer. I am certified to teach these sorts of things. However, I don't know you, I don't know who is watching, and I don't know what you've been told. So please, 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 if twisting, arching, rolling isn't for you, please be mindful of your doctors, okay? So spinal rotation, we're gonna reach up, breathe in, now, notice my shoulders are still where they belong. Most of the time when we reach up, we do this, and we raise our shoulders and our, everything's squeezed up by our head. <sighs> Bring those shoulders down. Now, see how much space I have? That's where we want to be. So we're going to breathe up. Tail still long towards that seat, and as we breathe out, <sighs> rotate to the right. Now. You can use some leverage. You can put your left hand against your right thigh and push, keeping that shoulder down. Don't be up here. You can also grab the back of your chair with your right hand and pull a little bit if you need a little help. So we're going to hold here for another moment. We've got our shoulders relaxed. We're not scrunched up. We have both of our sit bones evenly on our seat. We're not rocked up to one cheek or the other. We're going to breathe up, rotate other way, same idea, right hand now can be leveraged against your left thigh, left hand can be on the back of your chair, giving yourself a little gentle tug into the stretch, both shoulders down away from the ear, see all the space, that's what you want. Now. Let's put some motion and some breath to it. Again, if you're like, Tracy, I hate breath work. This is too much, then don't sweat it. Move however you want to move. But if you're comfortable with trying a little breath work, follow me. Breathe up. I'm breathing extra loud to cue you. I promise I don't breathe this loud always. One more each side.
awesome work, friends. Unravel. Again, take this opportunity if you need to, just to kind of wiggle in your seat a little bit. Reset if you need to. <sighs> How are we doing? I hope we're feeling good. Please remember, this is all a guide. If you need to take longer when you play this video back, if you need to do more, do more. If you need to take longer, take longer. Just want to make sure that this video is a manageable length, but you can spend more time in any of these stretches that you need to. This video is merely a guide, merely some education for you to take and make your own. All right, so last piece we're going to do up in our kind of torso area is just some side body stretches. Now, this is a stretch you've probably done a hundred times in your life. So when you see me do it, don't just do it how you always do it, okay? Listen to my cue because I can guarantee you if you do my cue, you're going to be like, what? This is a whole different stretch. I promise. So let's start with our right side. Again, let's reset our posture so we're nice and tall, tail towards the seat, pulling that spine up, shoulders relaxed. We're going to reach out to the right. Now, what do we normally do in a side stretch, right? We just kind of dump over into it. Okay. No. So we're going to reach out to the right, and then I want you to give it a little extra reach out. So we reach out to the right, and then a little extra reach. And now, I want you to imagine you're coming up and over. So we're going to reach out like you're trying to touch the wall, and then like you're trying to drag your fingers up the wall, across the ceiling, and now over. Right sit bone firmly onto that seat. You can take your left hand and just let it relax. I like to kind of put it up against my left inner thigh and use it for a little bit of leverage. That's okay too, as long as you're not straining into your left shoulder. You should feel an awesome stretch through here. If you don't, listen to my cue again. We reach out and then drag our fingers up the wall, over the ceiling, and then to the far wall. Couple breaths here. Good. Bring it back down. Sit back up. Feels totally different, doesn't it? First time I ever heard up and over, I was like, huh? <laughs> and it makes so much sense versus just, I mean, I feel nothing. I feel everything when I do it the other way. Left hand, let's reset our posture. Left hand out. Reach out, drag up the wall, across the ceiling, and now over. So your gaze can be ahead, it can be down towards the floor, it can be up towards your arm, whatever feels good, wherever you feel comfortable. Make sure this shoulder is down so we're not cranking up next to our head. Shoulder's still down where it belongs. Left sit bone firmly on the seat. We're not rocking up out of it. That's where some of the stretch comes, is here. We can take our right hand and put it inside our thigh for a little leverage if we need to. Let's back out of it. Perfect. Woo! Oh, man, that one really got to me. <laughs> Ah, so we have now kind of worked everything from chin to belly. Let's move into a little bit of lower body. So, lower body. I also have here beside me, and I don't know if we're even going to use these, but if you have a yoga block, just keep in mind you might need this depending on the height of your chair for one of our stretches coming up. I meant to mention that a little sooner. So I brought it. I don't know if I'm going to need it. But yoga blocks are always good to have around when you're stretching. Seated, standed, on the floor. If you own them or something that's similar to this height, this is about the stack of probably like two textbooks. Not that I've had a textbook in a long time, but from what I remember, about like this. So I just mentioned that because you might see me grab one here in a moment. I'm just not sure. So we're going to do a figure four leg stretch. Um, not the figure four Ric Flair. Woo! Not, not that figure four. <laughs> so... Figure four, leg stretch. We're gonna stretch our hips and our glutes. For a lot of us, this is gonna be intense. And I'll show you some variations, okay? But what we want to do, again, we've got our sit, 
exactly how it has been. We're going to take our left foot and we're going to cross our ankle across our knee. Now for some of us, we might be lit up already. We might be there and that's okay. Now, if you are here, I bet your leg is like cranked up like this or you're here but you're in excruciating pain, something you can do is sort of sit back on your seat a little more and straighten this leg out. And then that releases some of the pressure a little bit. So that is an option for you if you really need to release some pressure. If it's just a lot, then this is an option to reduce it. Otherwise, we're here. We've got our ankle crossed over our knee. We've got our left foot flexed. So I want your foot not flexed like a ballerina, like a pointed toe, flexed like if you were up against a wall, your foot would be flat on the wall. From here, we want to even our hips, make sure both sit bones are on the seat. Now again, hear me out, because when I say we're going to fold forward, most of you are just going to do this. Not much benefit there. So I want you to hear me out. We're going to fold forward, but I want you to take your chest and push it out. Now, depending on your stability, you might actually need to hold on to your chair to stay nice and stable. So. You know, when I start leaning forward, my right booty cheek kind of comes up off the ground, off the seat. So you might need to kind of hold on to the side of your chair. But sit tall, push your chest forward as far as you can, and then come down. If you can, come down. So again, I am flexy and bendy, so this isn't too hard for me. This isn't too intense, but most of you are more likely to be, you know, pushing your chest out and then be like, whoa, and that's okay. So go to your whoa, and then pause and breathe. Hi, Rizzo. <laughs> Are you playing in my hair? Now again, the point, this is a perfect stretch to demonstrate. The point of this stretch And the point of any stretch is not how far can I force it. So if you start to bend forward and you feel searing pain, hot, hot tension, and you're like, nope, keep pushing, it hurts so bad, you're not really stretching. You are tense, you are tight, you are in pain. So I want you to go to that place where you're like, oh, but I can stay, and then breathe. You want to relax into a stretch. You don't want to force it. Relax into the stretch. Don't force it. I just said the same thing twice on purpose because I mean it. Relax into the stretch. Don't force it. Let's sit up. We're going to do the other side. Cross our right ankle across our knee. Flex that foot like you're standing on the wall. Make sure you've got both sit bones on that seat. Come up and then chest comes forward. Ooh, now I have a very different response on this side. So about here, I feel a pretty intense pull, but it's one I can live with. So I'm going to stay here. And breathe. And I want you to think about this. Again, this is a perfect holding stretch to do some work. I want you to breathe in and imagine wherever you're feeling the tension, let's say it's here, that you are pulling air from that spot and then send all of that breath right back to that spot. Now you might say to me, Tracy, I can't breathe into my butt. What are you talking about? Imagine you can. Breathe in from that spot. Breathe back into it. And it's like a whole new world opens up. I don't know the science behind it. I don't know why it works, but it really is like you are just able to release that tension by breathing your air right into it. Let's come on up. Good, I know, it's wild, but it works. And if you're like, oh, I'm nervous about it, I feel weird, and this class is live, and I feel hurried, 
do it after class. Just pick a stretch that feels good but challenging and then imagine wherever you're feeling that tension, pull air out of it, breathe back to it. You will be amazed. All right, so we have done our figure four. So we're now going to do a wide sit. So we're going to come wide onto our chair. And you might just sit off the edge of it a little more. Just kind of get where it feels comfortable. We want to sit wide. Again, we still have our feet flat on the floor. We still have our tail nice and long, and we're still sitting tall. Wide is subjective. So again, we don't push into it. So wide until we feel some discomfort, but we feel we can live there, okay? And we're going to put our hands on the inside of our knees. We're going to roll our shoulders down, and we're going to tilt forward a little bit. Now, again, everybody's different. So I can come all the way down, and that's about where I feel a stretch. Thank you, rude kisses. That's not very common. So you come to where you feel good, and then we're going to put some gentle pressure into this right leg, but push against it. So don't pressure and open your leg up. Kind of press your hand into your knee and your knee into the hand at the same time. We're pushing together. And we're gonna rotate our right shoulder down. And we're gonna breathe up. Other way. And keeping our shoulders away from our ears. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more on each side. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Good. Come up to the middle. And we're going to come to the middle. Breathe out. And come to where you feel comfortable. Maybe you can put your tiptoes or your fingertips on the ground. Maybe if you have blocks, you can put a block on the ground. Get some elevation. Wherever you're at, I want you to think about making your spine as long as possible. So your booty is firmly on the seat. So imagine that your booty is reaching as far back on the seat as it can while your head is reaching as far to the wall as you can. And then, if you have any bends left, bend into it. Fold in. So kind of like in yoga, we do flat back, pull our chest forward, and then fold. Let's take two big rounds of breath here. Good. Now put your hands on the ground if you're that low and push yourself up. Then to your thighs and push yourself up. Now guys, again, if you were down there, that's fine. If you were here, that's beautiful. Be where you are. This goal of this class is not for you to touch your head to the floor. It's for you to get a great stretch, your own personal great stretch, okay? All right, so we're gonna do the last couple stretches. We're going to do a seated lunge. Now, this is a little different and it might not work with your chair. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here because it really depends on your chair if this is gonna work for you, okay? And this is a place where I might use a block as well. So we won't spend a ton of time here just in case it doesn't work for you, but I wanna show you the option. So a seated lunge, we're gonna turn and we're gonna put one leg off the side of the chair here, like where this would be your forward foot in your lunge. And then we're gonna spin this leg forward and back. So now if I removed this chair, I would be in a lunge, but I have the support of the chair to help me. So I'm here. Now the width of my chair makes this a little tough because my chair is very wide from side to side, but we want to try to have our right hip on the seat, 
left leg extended, and still tall through our body. We also still want to try to have our tail long towards the seat. Now, this can all be complicated by tightness, my hips are tight, and also the build of your chair. So if this is just like, what is happening? Let it go, it's okay. But you should be feeling a great stretch through the front of this left thigh, especially in the front of that left hip. So just take a moment, steady your right cheek on your seat, try to get your tail long, and try to get your left leg as straight as you can. Now, if you're super tight, you might have to have a bend in your knee. That's okay. This is your fullest version. This is your modification. Lastly, if you really need some more, you can reach that left arm up to the sky. Woo! And if you need even more, you can up and over. Your choice, your journey here. Wherever you are, let's take one more big deep breath. Let it down, and now we're going to go to the other side. So we're just going to rotate around. So now our left leg is our front lunge leg, and our right leg is coming straight back. So again, whew, we're going to make sure our left cheek is firmly on our seat. Our hips are even left to right. And we're going to try... Oh, and that we have a nice long tail. That's the part that's hard for me in this pose. And the, the challenging part, because if you let your hips roll back, it releases the pressure here. You tuck those hips under. Oh, pressure sitting, you see? I have to bend my knee now, but I'm in the right position. So, left cheek on the seat, tail long, back leg towards straight, but bent if you need it. And if you want more, you can reach up and you can take it over, but I don't need that today. <laughs> I have a lot of problems with my right hip. If you don't already know me, I have scoliosis. My right hip is raised up higher than the other, so it uh, definitely causes some discomfort in this area for sure, but it's a very valuable stretch because that's what I really need. All right, let's take one more big breath. Let it down. All right, guys, we are in the home stretch. We're going to do a hamstring stretch and some ankle and toe stretches, and then we'll be all done. So hamstring stretch, really simple here. We're going to take our left, watch out to you. <laughs> We're going to take our left leg out straight in front of us. We've got our hips. Again, we're firmly seated on our chair, and we're off the edge. We've got our left leg forward, toes flex if you're trying to reach your toes up towards your face. Now, if that immediately makes your calf cramp, relax your toe, okay? This is how we'll get our best stretch, but you can get a perfectly lovely stretch with your toes relaxed as well. So we're here, and again, chest, so we're not folding like this. Our chest pushes out, 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 and then once you've gone as far as you can, if you have more to give, now you can fold over. Or, if that's too much, just push your chest out, 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 and then once you get to the ooh point, just brace yourself on your knee. You can also, if you have yoga blocks, out, 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 but you can't quite reach the floor, yoga blocks for your hands. Brings the floor to you. That is really the point of a yoga block. It brings the floor to you. Now, you can also you want a little more, you can take your right hand and reach it forward, 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 and then out to the left foot and grab the outer left of your foot and rotate. Now guys, I'm only taking you extra steps. You might still be here and that's beautiful. If you need more and have more, we can reach out and then rotate, grab the outside of that left foot and stretch. While you're pulling that right hip back, rotating to the left. All right, if you're out here, unwind with me, bring yourself back up. We'll do the other side.
Left leg bends, right leg is straight, and again, flex those toes up toward your face, or relax it if your calf is cramping. And again, chest comes out, and wherever you stop, if it's up here, you support yourself on your knee, keep reaching that chest forward, and breathing into it. Again, it's not a force, relax into it. If you need more, keep reaching that chest forward, until you fold to the floor and stay here. And if you want a little bit more, reach out with that left hand, grab the outer edge of your right foot and rotate while you're pulling your left hip back. So don't let your left cheek start rotating forward. Pull that left cheek back. Rotate and breathe. Good, guys. All right, let's unwind. Walk our way back up. <sighs> Beautiful. All right, guys, we're just going to do some ankle rolls and some toe point and flexes, and we're going to be done. So here you can sit back on your chair if you want. Give your back a little break. And we're just going to roll out our ankles. So you can just straighten your leg, or if you want a little support of your arm, just to help hold that puppy up, that's fine too. And we're just going to roll to the right. Hear all those snap, crackle, pop, rice krispies, it's fine. <laughs> it's just fine. And then reverse it. And now we point and flex, point and flex. Good. All right, other ankle out and we roll. And reverse it. Point and flex. Perfect. All right, guys. The last thing, we're going to come back to our seat. And I want you to just breathe up. And then fold over your legs as far as it feels comfortable. Just release. Let those fingers dangle. If you are flexible, you can actually wrap your hands under your thighs and give yourself a little extra pull. One big deep breath together, breathe in and breathe out. Let it all go. Like everything could just pour out of the top of your head and into the floor. And wherever you are, walk yourself back up. So, guys, you are done. That is my seated chair flow class. Worked from head to toe, gently at your own level, at your own pace. And I hope this felt really good for you. I hope it was a great wind down for your day. Or if you're doing this after the fact, I hope it was a great start to your morning or a great lunch break, whatever the case may be. I hope you enjoyed it. And this is, again, just kind of the direction that I'm hoping to move or I'm thinking of moving with Strong Style Fitness. Now, again, not exclusively just stretching or anything like that, but just getting back to, again, what my specialties are mobility, functionality, corrective exercise. Now, I'm not saying I'm not going to kick your butt from time to time either, but this is some of the specialized series that I want to work on, mobility series, corrective series, things like that, that I hope to bring to you into the future. So guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you are new or if you're a renegade that just joined me today, thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I am Strong Style Fitness or Strong Style Fit on all social media. 
I'd be happy to talk to you. Um, I also do in-person training, but I am pretty full right now, but I can always, always, always find the time to help those who need it. So guys, thank you so much, and I look forward to presenting the new vision for Strong Style Fit in 2022. Mwah.